Hey guys, Jarek here, and last time I covered how to record gameplay off your PC, but this time I'm going to be covering how to record gameplay off of your consoles using a Blackmagic Intensity Pro. Now, as a warning, I am mainly a PC gamer. I built my computer from the ground up, but I don't really care too much for wire management, so my computer and behind it is just a mess of wires. Also, something else to note is that if you came here expecting to be able to record your console for free, uh, there is no way to do that. You have to buy a capture card. You have to buy an actual physical item to record your console. So, sorry, but you're going to have to drop some money into it if you want to do that. Alright, so here's where all my gaming gets done, whether it's on PC or 360. Uh, don't worry, this method still does work if you're using a TV instead of a computer LCD. So, this should be able to cover everything. So, here's where the magic actually happens. What you're seeing right now, this uh, chip right here is actually the Blackmagic Intensity Pro. I have the PCI Express version, which just plugs straight into the PCI Express slot right there. And then uh, after that, all you need to do is install the drivers, which comes in the box. It's fairly straightforward. I don't think I really need to cover that. It's just installing drivers to make it work. Um, yeah, you just plug it in, basically, and it works. And uh, let me cover it a little bit more. They do make a USB 3.0 version, where if you have USB 3.0 and you don't really know what you're doing with computers, you can just plug it in into your USB port, and you can record to your hard drives that way. So if you have USB 3.0 and you're not very good with computers, I would recommend buying that. Uh, but in other words, this works absolutely great, and I actually kind of prefer the PCI Express version. So here is my 360. For the sake of time's sake, I'm going to be covering the 360 and not the PS3 today. Uh, so I record via HDMI. So I have my HDMI cord coming out of the back of my 360, and uh, here's the wire, and it leads up to the back of the capture card. That's actually the back of the capture card. You saw the other side of it, and uh, this is plugged straight into the capture card. So here is the 360 HDMI cable. That's going into the capture card, and this is what the capture card uses to record both video and audio. So, theoretically, you could just plug this in and start recording. You wouldn't be able to see what you're doing unless you have the software open, but you can just plug that in and record and it would work. Uh, but in order to get it to display on your LCD or your TV, you need to plug in another HDMI cable. This is what this one is. And then I have this running back into the back of my LCD, and that's how I display it. Uh, to myself when I play games so I can actually see what I'm doing. It really is that simple, that's all you need to do. However, if you want to play it through your computer's LCD and you want the audio to be crisp and clear and actually you want audio that's not terrible LCD speaker audio, now if you're running this back through your TV you're already done, you're good, that's all you need to do. Because uh, chances are if you're running through your TV you're, you're using your TV speakers or you're using speakers hooked into your TV. But if you are on PC and you want to have the setup I have, uh, you're going to need to use this comes with the Microsoft's HDMI adapter. See the two analogs. You'll need to plug that into the back of your sound card, right into the microphone jack. If I can get that to focus. There we go. So you need this adapter right here, and you'll need to plug it into the microphone jack. Basically this goes straight into my sound card and it will play back through my sound card with uh, great audio. But if you don't have a sound card, like for instance, that's what I have my line in plugged into. That's my sound card. But a lot of people don't have an extra sound card, which, by the way, don't let anyone tell you sound cards don't make a big difference because holy shit, if you put a sound card in your computer, the sound is so much clearer, you have true surround sound, and it's really worth spending the money doing that. But if you don't have it, you can just plug it into the onboard audio, which the onboard audio is right up there through the usual mic input. Now this, I'll be honest, this sounds really bad. Uh, if you plug it in through there, it's going to be kind of staticky and really not sound clear. It won't sound that way while you're recording it, uh, but you really need an actual sound card to make it not sound bad. So again, to recap, I, I probably just made it seem really complicated there, but it's not complicated. Basically, HDMI from 360 into the capture card, another HDMI from your capture card into your LCD, done. That's all you really need to do. The audio is something completely uh, additional I did just to make it so I, I can actually hear the game sound effects and I really want it to be clear I'm a bit uh, I'm very picky with the quality of what I'm doing so I want to have really good audio however that's just the 360 the PS3 is a little bit different the PS3 does not allow you to use an HDMI cable for some reason it has a different encryption code and the Blackmagic uh, capture card it blocks it you'll have to use you're seeing see that VGA adapter I can't find mine but I'll, I'll put a picture up it Basically, you have to use the analog and plug it in that way, and uh, it, it works and records the same way. You just have to change some settings, and it's not as complicated as it looks, but it is kind of annoying. All right, so now that we've covered the hardware, let's go ahead and cover the software you need to record off your capture card. So this software actually comes on a disk 
out of the box that you get, or you can alternatively download it off their website. And it's called Blackmagic Media Express. So you have to have this open in order to record anything off your 360. So this is what it looks like. Go ahead and go to the capture tab, and this is what you'll you need to be on this tab to record. It's showing nothing right now because my 360 isn't turned on, so let me go ahead and turn it on. So there you go, you're seeing what I'm recording right now, or not recording, but you're seeing my 360 right now. Something very important to mention right away is that this cannot record in 1080p. Uh, the, there's really no reason to record in 1080p when it comes to this though, because this current console generation doesn't have true 1080p. It has upscaled 720. The 1080 you see is fake 1080. It's literally just stretched out 720. This current console generation cannot handle 1080. It would make it lag way too much if it had true 1080. Uh, so there's really no re reason to record in 1080 even if it allowed you to. And uh, even then, if you did record in 1080, it'd just take up more space on your hard drive, it'd take more out of your hard drive, uh, it would make the file sizes bigger and take longer to upload, it would take longer to render in Sony Vegas. Uh, there's just really no reason to. It's record in 720p, that's what you should record to. Something else very important to mention is that the preferences, your your resolution has to be the same in these settings here and here. So for instance, I have it set to 720p right now. If I change it to like 1080p and click OK, it's going to go black and it's not going to record anything because the resolution is different. It has to be the same. So I'm going to change it back to 720 and bam, you're able to see what I'm doing. Uh, so it has to be the same on both preferences. So settings here are fairly simple. There's not much you really need to tweak around with. Uh, I have it set to AVI Motion JPEG. I haven't really tried the other ones. This one works great for me. The quality of the capture card is incredibly clear. Uh, so if you want to just paste your settings with mine and match them up if you're having issues, uh, go ahead and try that. Here is just wherever you want to record to on your hard drives. I have it set to my Velociraptor. And it doesn't seem to take very much out of your hard drives. Uh, my other hard drive is somewhat slow, only about 45 megabytes write speed. Uh, 45 megabytes a second for the write speed in it runs perfectly fine. No hitch ups, no lag, no no anything. It looks really good no matter what I'm recording to. So it doesn't take much out of your hard drive. But it does record in somewhere large file sizes. Nowhere near as big as like Fraps or DX3, uh, but still fairly large. So you're going to have to render them down later and I'll get to that in a moment. Now the one thing that kind of bothers me about this program is that it doesn't have an option to record from an external mic. So if you want to do like live commentary, like do a playthrough or something and record your voice while you're playing, you're going to have to use an external program something like Audacity or what I use is a free sound recorder. So let me go ahead and open that. This program takes a little bit of a while to open. Oh, there we go. Uh, this is what I use. Works perfectly fine. Uh, I set the hotkey to F7. So what I'll do is I'll just press S7 and click capture at the same time. And then later just put it in Sony Vegas and edit it that way. And that's how I get the live commentary when I'm playing uh, gameplay. Just use headphones and record using this. However, if you want to do live commentary with someone else, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. The thing with this capture card is it doesn't record your headset. Like if someone's talking just through your headset, it won't record that. Uh, you have to have that person coming through your speakers, which if someone's coming through the speakers, then you also have to turn down the gameplay of the video game itself. And not every single Xbox game allows you to turn down the audio of the game. So with some games, you're not going to be allowed to do that. On top of that, that quality is going to be terrible because it's Xbox Live mic quality. So honestly, what I recommend doing is telling your friend to get off Xbox and to get on Skype, or at least for talking. I tell them to get into a Skype call and download this program called EVR or something like that. I'm forgetting what the actual name is. Uh, sounds something like EVR. I don't know how to pronounce it. But this is the program I use uh, whenever I do live commentary with someone else. I tell them to get on Skype and I record the Skype call, which is a lot higher quality than recording Xbox Live. So I recommend doing this. It sounds a lot clearer and it definitely is a lot better. But if you want to record your Xbox Live sound anyway, uh, let me go more in depth on how you do so. All right, so here's my 360 controller. And the thing with doing live commentary through Xbox Live is that, it, like I said, it has to be coming through the speakers, which if you're doing a live commentary, then they're going, your mic is going to pick up everything coming out of your speakers, so then you're going to have terrible feedback. So you have to be wearing headphones. But then how do you talk to that person if you have an Xbox Live mic on and you're wearing headphones? Uh, it requires you to get an extra little piece, which is actually very, very, uh, very cheap, only like a dollar. 
And here's that piece I'm talking about. What this allows you to do is this allows you to plug in just a regular PC headset into your 360 controller. So let me go ahead and plug that one in. Try to do this one-handed without knocking everything over. There we go. All right, so it's plugged in. And here is my headset. This is my headset I use for PC gaming. I usually don't use this mic. I have a big condenser mic, that one right there that I usually use for when I'm talking, doing voiceovers. Uh, but I can use this mic with my 360 by simply just plugging in the microphone slot into the bottom of this. Unfortunately, with my experience with these adapters, is that the headset won't work. You have the mic will work, but the headset won't work. Uh, so what you then you have to do there is plug this in to your speakers itself. And you probably notice there's not much space to do that. It's a very short cable. So you're going to have to get one of these, which is an extension. Uh, so take your cable. This is really hard to do one-handed, by the way. So you take your cable, you plug it into the headphone slot, then you take the other end of it here and actually just plug it into these speakers itself, which luckily mine are on top of my desk and it's incredibly easy for me to do instead of having to go under my desk or something like that. So there you go, you just plug it in like that, that way you have the sound coming through your speakers, through, and that way you have your, uh, your sound of them, them talking coming through your headphones and the gameplay itself coming through the headphones and this mic will work uh, through Xbox Live. So that's how you solve that issue. Like I said, the quality is not great. Um, and you could alternatively simply plug this into the back of your computer and get the audio of them a little more clearly recorded onto your hard drive. But the problem with that then is that you can't communicate with them. So this is pretty much what you have to do if you want to record Xbox Live when you're talking to someone else through Xbox Live. Uh, like I said, it's not my preferred way to do it. It works, but I highly recommend simply just using Skype and talking and recording through Skype. So this is something I forgot to mention earlier. Uh, this is the Blackmagic control panel, and it's overall very simple. There's only a few things you really need to do here. Uh, set input. You have to make sure this matches up with what you're trying to record from. So, for instance, if I'm recording both the video and the audio from an HDMI cable, I need to have set input to HDMI video and HDMI audio. But if I was recording from, say, a PS3, I would need to change it from, uh, an from HDMI to analog, since I'd have to use an analog for the PS3. Uh, so basically just make sure it's matched up correctly, otherwise either the video will be black or the audio, there will be no audio at all. Set output is basically, uh, it doesn't give you many options, but set output is basically what's coming through your LCD or your TV outside of the capture card. So that's really all you need to mess with. Uh, the rest of this is pretty simple. If you wanted to mess with this, you can, but uh, just leave them at off. There's really nothing you need to deal with here. Uh, video levels, and you can do some tweaking, but the rest of it is stuff you really don't need to mess with. So, there's the, uh, the control panel, in a nutshell. Now what I'm about to say, if you have your audio coming back through your TV, uh, you can go ahead and stop listening to me. This is specific for you want your audio coming out of your PC speakers. If you want the setup I do, this is what you'll have to do. But if you're recording on uh, your capture card to your hard drive and you're playing it back through your TV speakers, uh, you can tune me out. This means absolutely nothing to you. So if you want the audio to come through your PC speakers, like I mentioned, you have to plug the line into your microphone jack. If you have onboard audio and not a specific sound card, this is what you'll have to do. Right click on the speaker thing, go to recording devices. It'll be one of the line-ins. You should have plenty, uh, but let's just go to auxiliary, which is for an example. And you might have to click on listen to this device if it's not playing back. Like I said, if you're doing this with onboard audio, it's going to sound pretty bad as is. However, if you have an actual sound card, like for instance, mine is a creative sound card. So I have something called the Creative Console Launcher, and every single company that makes sound cards has something like this. So you just have to make sure this is how it's set up. It should give you an option, like say Mixer or somewhere, or if you have a different company, it'll, it will should say something similar to that. And uh, it'll be something called Line In. Now default, it'll be muted. For some reason, it loves to mute things. So just make sure that's unchecked. And then it'll sound just like PC gaming, full surround sound, really, really clear, great sound. You just got to make sure that's unchecked. And this is actually pretty useful. This is the, uh, what I use for my sound card. I can mix all this up, give myself more bass or less bass, and just for listening to music and whatnot, have full 5.1 surround sound, true surround sound. Or uh, say if I'm talking to someone on Skype and trying to play on my 360 and I want to turn my 360 down, I can just turn that down a little bit while I'm talking to them. 
So yeah, that's what you have to do to have the audio actually coming through your PC speakers and having it be good quality or just hearing it in general because when you first plug it in, you're probably not gonna hear it. So let's go ahead and do a quick little capture just to show you how to render this video down. So I'm recording 720p right now, just recording the menu, nothing special. All right, that's more than enough recording. Now let's go ahead and open up Sony Vegas Pro 11, which this is what I use to render all my videos down and uh, pretty much what everyone's going to use works very well. And uh, it's very expensive, so I honestly would recommend torrenting it. It just simply costs way too much for any normal person to buy. Uh, but you can find torrents of it very easy. I'm a terrible person promoting piracy, I understand. All right, so let's go ahead and open up that file that I just rendered, or I just recorded. Here it is. So here's the file. Something I have noticed is while I'm gaming, you usually have to turn up the brightness of the uh, of the actual gameplay a little more than you would because it's running through the capture card and then running through the HDMI cable as well. So make sure to try to do that as well. So here's a little bit of, of recording. It looks poor through the preview of Sony Vegas, but the quality is actually really good. So once you have that in there, you have it all edited and you want to render it, go to File. Render as, and you want to go to Sony AVC, and there will be something that says Internet 69 HD, and that's what you want to select. And uh, I have it's different names for me because I changed the name of it. It's all my custom templates. So click 720, custom template, and this is what you want. You shouldn't have to change anything else. It should look just like this. It'll give you good quality. Uh, but not gigantic file sizes, perfect for uploading to YouTube. It was actually made with that in mind. And uh, audio, that's what you should get for audio. So you can just match up your settings with mine, and uh, that should be good for the quality there. And then you change the name, browse, wherever the hell you want to save it to, and then click render, and it'll just make the video for you, and then at that point you can just upload it to YouTube. So that's how you record off your 360. It's a little bit more complicated than recording from your PC, and I would recommend that you just switch and become a PC gamer if you plan to record anything. So there you go. There's some uh, tutorial on how to use your Blackmagic Intensity Pro. Hope it helped, and I'll see you guys later.